Hi everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp 2D video. So in this video, we're going to learn how to make your player jump very easily with some simple lines of codes using C Sharp. So let's get started. So currently what we have in the scene is we have a player and currently it can simply run on this platform. It can go left and right and it can simply go. This is all it can do. It cannot jump, it cannot do double jump or anything like that. Okay. And we have already learned how to do this in my first Unity C Sharp Scripting 2D tutorial. So if you haven't checked that video, make sure to check that out and you will learn all these things. But I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you uh, a little, little bit here. So here's the script that we are using. So here we have two functions. The platform move function which is responsible for the movement and the flip player function which is responsible for the flipping of the player to left and right direction okay so using this function we are simply adding the velocity in the x-axis and in the y-axis we are keeping the velocity same and then we are calling this platform move function from our fixed update and we are taking the inputs from our input.get axis. So we are taking the inputs, getting the inputs and moving the player using this transform.translate function. All right. Okay. So this is what we're using to move the player. All right. So now we're going to learn how we can add some jump feature to our player. So for that, here I'm going to create a new function called void jump. And inside this, we're going to add the functionality to jump. Now, adding the jump functionality is very, very easy. So, in order to add the jump, here we're simply going to say RB, which is the rigid body that is attached to the player. So, make sure you have a rigid body attached to the player and make sure you have access to the rigid body by using this rigid body 2D RB variable. All right. Now, here we're going to say RB.velocity. So we are going to set the velocity of our rigid body and we're going to set the velocity to vector 2 dot up multiplied by jump force. So we have not created this variable yet, but we will create soon. So here what you're doing is we are adding a jump force at the upwards direction to our character. Okay. So now here we're going to create a new float variable. We're going to call it jump force public float jump force so this will decide by how much force we want to make our player jump okay so now this function is responsible for making our player jump now let's go back to our update function and here we're going to say if input dot get key down key code dot space so that pretty much means whenever we press the space key on our keyboard we want our player to jump so when the space key is pressed we simply want to call the jump function right here so that means whenever the space button is pressed our player will jump so let's go back to unity and check how this is working so we need to add a jump force manually here as you can see the jump force is set to zero so i'm going to add the jump force let's say about five or something i think something like five should be okay so let's add five click on play and now you will see here we have the player we can move left and right and when I press the space button our player jumps and it looks like it's floating in the air so you can go ahead and increment the value of jump speed let's say make it about 10 and you will see the player jumps higher but it still looks like the player is floating on the sky now in order to make the jump behavior a little bit better what you can do is you can increase the gravity scale of the player's rigid body so that the player falls down faster. So as you can see here, we have the rigid body attached to the player and the gravity scale is set to one. So we're gonna go ahead and make it five. You can also make it three. So you need to simply go ahead and um, try different combinations of this gravity scale and this jump force to create a behavior that actually works for your game. So I'm gonna give the gravity scale to five and I'm gonna set the jump force to about, let's say 15. And now if I click on play, you will see now we will get a much better behavior like it looks like now it's really jumping. You can also go ahead and make the jump speed a little bit higher so that uh, the player jumps even more. But I think this one is good for me and it is giving me a good jumping behavior. 
So now the jump is working. But the problem is that our player can jump infinite amount of times. So as you can see, if I press the space button any number of times, our player can keep jumping and it can go to the sky and never come back. Okay, so we need to fix this issue if we want to actually create a realistic jump movement. Now, in order to do the jumping or in order to prevent from multiple jumping, what we want to do is we want to do something called ground check. So we're going to check if our character is actually in the ground. And if it is on the ground, only then we will allow it to jump. And if it is not in the ground, we're gonna, we are not going to allow it to jump. Okay. Now, in order to check whether our player is at the ground or not, we're going to create a simple empty game object, which you're going to call ground check, which will check if our player is at the ground or not. So currently, as you can see, I have already created a ground check variable here. So I'm going to delete this one. You can simply select your player character, right click, create an empty game object and make sure it is the child of your player character. Now I'm going to rename this one to ground check. Now you can go here and click and select an icon so that you can see it clearly on the scene. I think I'm going to select this icon. And now you can simply drag the ground check down somewhere like this in the middle of the two feet. So this is the point which will check whether our player is at the ground or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a small circle right here. And that circle will check if it is colliding with the ground. And if the circle is colliding with the ground, that means we are on the ground and we can jump. And if the circle is not colliding with the ground, that means we are currently jumping and we cannot jump anymore. All right. So now let's go back to our player script. Where is that? Here's our player script. Let's go back to it. Now we need to do something that is ground check so for that here we're going to create a new variable we're going to call it bool is grounded okay so what this will do is this variable will store whether our player is currently grounded or not so this boolean variable can store only two values either true or false okay so when it is grounded it will be true when it is not grounded it will be false and depending on that we're going to take the decision of jumping or not jumping all right so now inside the fixed update we're going to write is grounded equal to that means we are we are assigning a value to is grounded and what value we're going to assign here we're going to say physics 2d dot overlap sphere not overlap sphere, overlap circle because this is a 2D game. So we are creating a small little circle at the position so that we can check if the circle is colliding with the ground. And depending on that, we're going to say is grounded is true or false. Okay. So first of all, we have to pass the position where we want to create the small little circle. So here we have already created a variable. Uh, we have not created yet, but we have created a we have created an empty game object in the scene which is our ground check element and that is the object's position we're going to set here so first of all let us create a new game object or new uh, variable here public transform ground check okay and here we're going to simply say ground check dot position okay and for the second variable we need to pass how much radius of the circle that we want so let's say i want a circle with a radius of 0.2 f so i'm going to pass that and as a third parameter we need to actually say we need to pass a layer mask so that means which layers we want to check as ground so let's say in our case in our game we have different layers like water air ground so we're gonna specify which layer is actually ground and we're going to check our is grounded variable only at that layer okay so for that here we need to create another new variable public layer mask ground layer all right and here we're going to simply pass ground layer so this is the only layer that we want to check and we can of course set it up 
from our inspector okay so now the is grounded variable will be true or false depending on whether our circle is overlapping with the ground or not so now whenever the space button is pressed first of all we're going to check if is grounded that means if our character is grounded only then we're going to jump okay so when our character is grounded only then we're going to jump otherwise we are not going to allow it to jump so this should work let's go back to unity because we have to assign some more values now so here we are inside unity and uh, let's wait for it to load and if you select our player character as you can see here we have a slot for ground check so here we need to pass the position which we want to check our ground so here we have the ground check element we're gonna drag and drop our ground check element right over here and for the second one we have to decide the ground layer currently it is set to nothing so for that we're gonna select our ground as you can see currently we have only this one set as our, set as our ground and we're gonna go to the layers click on add layer create a new layer called ground select our ground again go to layer and select ground so now our ground is positioned at the ground layer so from the player character we're gonna go to the ground layer and say only check the ground layer nothing else so now everything should work because we have set up all the variables and we have also written the code so let's click on play to see how this is working and here's our player I can try to jump multiple times and as you can see currently I can jump only once if I jump and try to jump again I cannot I it doesn't matter how many times I press the space button it doesn't matter it doesn't jump anymore and that's because it is checking for the ground and only when the player is grounded we are allowing it to jump that's why it's not jumping anymore okay so our code is working completely fine so if you're having problem let me try to explain it to you one more time so first of all we are creating a small little circle at the position of the ground check with this radius and we are telling this circle to check if it is colliding with any other object or if it is overlapping with any other object in the ground layer so if it is overlapping with any other object in the ground layer then it will turn true that means our is grounded will be true and when it is not colliding with anything our is grounded will automatically be false and inside our update we are saying when we press the space button if our player is grounded only then allow it to jump and if it is not grounded then don't allow it to jump okay as simple as that so this way our player can jump only when it is grounded and we have found out some ways by which you can actually detect the ground check so I hope this video helped you it might be a little bit confusing but try to rewatch this again and it will become clear to you so thank you so much for watching this is Raja and I try to make it simple so if it, if, it becomes, if it becomes complex sorry for that so if you like this video please hit the like button so that I can make more videos like this and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you are new to this so thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in a new video soon